So another thing that can be done, and again, so this links to the to the course of Yelena. So in many instances, so we do not have access to the full stage. In particular, for example, if we are dealing with high dimension, it's very difficult to make tomography and then to obtain the density matrix. In many instances, we only have like the expected value of some observables. And we would also like to know how much entanglement we have, given that we've seen some, some, observe, some expected values. Okay? So then this is um, another problem that I would like to, to mention to you, which is the detection of NPT entanglement with partial information. And the idea is the following. So instead of having the, full, the knowledge of the density matrix, so we only know, you can see that we only know the expected value of some observables. Okay? So I can have, for example, k observables that I go in the lab I measure. I determine the, the expected value. And given that we have these expected values, I would like to estimate how much entanglement I have. So and I'm going to estimate how, what I, I'm going to give an estimate of this random robustness of entanglement. Okay. So the idea is the following. So I want to, again, maximize P. It's going to be very similar, okay, such that, so I have that, so I would like that P rho plus one minus P identity. So everything partially transposed is positive. Okay, but now I don't know. So this, this is a variable of the problem. I don't know rho. But what I know is that the trace of OI times rho is equal to the value that I have observed. Okay, so now it's exactly the same as before. So where before, before I didn't have this line, these constraints here, I only had this constraint because I knew rho. Okay? But now I don't know rho. I only know that if I measure this observable, I obtain this value. And then I have k of these observables. Okay? So question to you, is this an SDP? Say again. Yes, same. thank you. Okay. So I have a rho is positive and trace of rho is equal to one. Thank you very much. Still, is this an SDP? Uh, I don't think it's linear in the variables, right? Yes, very good. Uh, so we have a problem here, right? We have p times rho, and this is not linear. So this is a variable, this is another variable. Cool. So this is quadratic. So I cannot solve this as an SDP if I write like this. So now I'm gonna tell you another trick that is used uh, very often, which is, so when we have a product of variables like this, one trick that we can use is the following. So, so we define a new variable, sigma, which is p times rho. Okay, so this is a new variable. So that okay, p is actually the trace of sigma, right? And sigma is still positive, okay? All right, so then I have, uh, yes, so then I have maximize P, but P is the trace of sigma, okay? Such that, okay, now I have 
P times rho is sigma, okay, plus 1 minus P is the, is the trace of sigma, okay, identity over d squared, partially transposing A, this is positive, all right? So now I have that the trace of OI, I could substitute, I can substitute rho by sigma divided by P, by P, right? So this gives me rho of sigma is actually uh, equal to P times OI, right? But I know that P is equal to the trace of sigma. This is the trace of sigma times this, OI. I know that the positivity of rho implies that the uh, sigma is positive as well. Okay. And then I have the trace of rho, which is, uh, what can I do if the trace of rho is equal to 1? The trace of rho is of uh, sigma is equal to the P times the trace of rho, okay. Ah, actually I don't need this, right? Yes, okay. Yes, so, so I'm, I'm actually, so sigma is an unnormalized matrix, okay? So in the same, in the same way that before I didn't need to impose that P was equal to one, okay? So I don't need to impose the normalization. Here I don't need to impose the, the trace of sigma is equal to one, okay? Because the trace of sigma is exactly the number that's gonna give me the, the, the robustness, okay? The objective function, right? So you see that what I did here was simply to, to define a new variable, okay? And rewrite the problem with respect to this new variable. Here I only have sigmas, okay? So now is the maximum of the trace of sigma, here I have the sigmas, and here I have the, the trace of the sigma with the observable is equal to this, and sigma is positive. So this trick that we use a lot. So sometimes you have a problem, sometimes you have a problem that you have this, that is, it looks non-linear, but there is a way of linearizing the problem. So, yeah, all right, so this is for, so here I'm using all the time this partial transposition, okay? So, and as I told you, this partial transposition is very nice because it's a relaxation that can be put in a, an SDP form, but it doesn't solve the problem, right? So if I, if, if I obtain here that this maximum is equal to one, I know that the state is PPT, but I don't know if it's separable or entangled. Okay, I cannot uh, do anything. So then, a natural question is, can I do better? Okay. So of course I cannot, I cannot test the, separa the separable set of separable states, but we may ask, okay, are there better relaxations to the problem? Okay, so this is perhaps, so this PPT relaxation is okay, but perhaps there are other relaxations which can also be put in an SDP form, which is better than the, the PPT. And then there exists a very nice result in entanglement theory. I don't know if Yelena is going to talk about this, which is, which is called case, the idea of K-symmetric extensions. Okay. So, so let me say, let me put uh, a subtitle here. So this is a convergent. Convergent hierarchy of SDPs for separability. So the idea of these case symmetric extensions is to find better and better approximations to the separable set. 
so better and better relaxations, in a way that all the relaxations are given by SDP, so SDP constraints. So this was, yeah, okay, so just to give you the reference, so this was given by Doherty, Parillo, Spedalieri, So this is a PRA in 2004. For me, it's one of the nicest, nicest results in entanglement theory. So, so what's the idea? Okay. So the first thing. So let's start step by step. So the first thing to notice is that if I state is separable. Then I can define the following state. No, sorry. Then there exists. There exists. Row A, B1, B2. If rho AB is a separable state, there exists a tripartite state. Now I have three parties, rho A, B1, B2 such that, so, so sometimes if it's uh, O, it's actually U, okay? Because when I write the U, it completes the <laughs> letters. <laughs> such that, rho A, B1, okay? Which is equal to the trace of rho A, B1, B2, the trace in B2, okay? So this is equal to rho A, B. And rho A B2, which is the trace in B1 of rho A B1 B2, is also equal to rho AB. Okay. So what is happening here? So what I'm saying is that if rho AB is separable, then there exists a tripartite density matrix such that the reduced states are equal to the separable state. Okay. And I can, so we can easily prove this by, by construction, okay? So such a state is, so I take, suppose that row AB is separable, then row AB has this decomposition. Right? And now, simply by construction, I can write the following state, AB1, B2, which is equal to summing lambda, B lambda, rho lambda A, tensor rho lambda B1, tensor rho lambda B2, and okay, rho lambda B1 is equal to rho lambda B2, which is equal to rho lambda. Okay? Right? So if they state is separable, I can simply define this other state here, which is tripartite, where both these density matrix and these density matrices are equal to this one. So if I trace this one, I obtain this state. If I trace this one, I obtain this state. Right, so this, if your state has such a, so if this happens, okay, if there exists such a matrix for which the reduced dense states is equal to rho AB, we say that rho AB has a two symmetric extension. Okay? Because I can extend rho AB into a tripartite state, which is symmetric, because these matrices are equal to this matrix here. And I, I say that it's two symmetric extension because I have two bobs. So, my uh, microphone. Yeah, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. So, maybe some more questions we could set out. <laughs> okay, just, just a second. Yeah. So, I wonder if there is some, the, the same kind of result for locality instead of separability. Because the, the proof for locality is it's already written on the board, right? Is, is there something similar? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, actually, as where I was. Okay, so this is called a two symmetric extension. And then you see that, so this statement here is very similar to the statement of PPT. Before we, we said, if the state is separable, do its PPT. Then, if a density matrix is NPT, then it's entangled. And I can use the same logics here. So, if the state is separable, it's two symmetric extendable. Which means that if the state is not two symmetric extendable, it's because it's entangled. Okay? And again, so these constraints here fits into an STP problem, right? Those are linear constraints. So now I have this. So if you give me row, okay, so I can test two symmetric extensions. Okay? So and I'm gonna do this test. Mm -hmm. oh, no, okay, so before okay, before I get there, so I just said two symmetric extensions, but I could extend into more uh, bobs, okay? So which this is the idea of case symmetric extension. So row A B is K symmetric extendable if there exists row A B1 up to BK such that row A B J is equal to row A B or J equal to 1 to K up to K. Okay? So it's the same idea, okay? So I say that this state is, has a k-symmetric extension. If I can find a multipartite state with k bobs for which every reduced density matrix is equal to the original one. Okay? And of course, I could use this, the, so the proof, use the same logics here, right? So let me erase this part here. So I could simply keep put in states here, okay? Up to rho lambda bk. Okay. So this would be up to bk, right? So if a state is separable, I can simply construct this matrix here. I can put as many bobs as I want, okay? And this would be. Which means that I can test if I stay, uh, okay, there is a question. So if a state is K uh, symmetric extendable for every K, it must be separable? Or yes. Not? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes, exactly. So this is a very important result. Thank you very much. And I'm going to repeat. Okay. This is a key point here. And I'm going to put this. So rho AB is separable if <coughs> And only if it is k symmetric extendable for all k's. And this is a key result in, in entanglement theory. Okay? So and it's if and only if. So of course if it's separable, it's easy to show that it is k symmetric extendable for any k, but the converse is also true. If, they, if the density matrix is k-symmetric extendable for all k's, for sure it's separable. Okay? And then you see that now with an SDP, so which I'm going to write next, we can test first two symmetric extensions. So if they, then if the state is not two symmetric extendable, okay, so the state is, sep is entangled. But if it is two symmetric extendable, we check three symmetric extendability. Then if, if it passes the test, we test four and five and seven, whatever. Okay. And this is why, so this is called a, a hierarchy of uh, same definite programs. Uh, does this notion of case symmetric extendability, I don't know, has anything to do with multipartite entanglement? Does it have any relation to it? Well, it for sure it has to do with monogamy, right? Monogamy of entanglement. So. What, what is monogamy is very similar to this, no? So for example, if A and B, they share a pure entangled state, okay? So this means that there is no tri there is no third party that can share exactly the same correlations with them, okay? So the, one of the reduced dense matrix will fail. Okay? So, 
So yeah, I cannot say more than that. It's, it's related to how the correlations are shared between many parties. So only if the state is separable, that it can share the correlations which are classical with many other parties. But if the state is entangled, at some point this sharing of correlations will fail. So if the, the, if the entanglement is, is genuinely like pre-partite, it doesn't have any obvious relation to k case extendability or something like that. So okay, so here I'm talking about bipartite entanglement. So if we are consider, suppose we want to test now tripartite entanglement. You give me a row A, B, C, and we want to test tripartite entanglement. Okay? So we can again consider k-symmetric extensions of tripartite entanglement, wow. and we are going to extend. We can extend Bob, and we can extend Charlie. Okay. So not, I'm not sure. So I think it's still if and only if. So if the tripartite state is fully separable, it's k-symmetric extendable for any k. I'm not sure if you can use these to test genuine multipartite entanglement. This I'm not sure. So I don't know if someone knows here. Is the definition of the of k-symmetric extendability uh, symmetric in the parties? So if you define it for Alice instead of Bob, it still gives the same definition? It's... Uh, well, the definition is the same. We can also extend Alice. There's no problem. And again, a state is separable if and only if it's k-symmetric extendable for Alice as well for any k. So the results are equivalent. It still holds. Yeah. But what may happen is that if it's not, if it's a, entangled, perhaps extending Bob, we need to reach k equal to five to detect the entanglement. But if we go for Alice, we need k equal to ten. They can be different if, if the state is not symmetric. This may happen. Thank you.